week or two Fun and laughter on a summer holiday No more worries for me or you For a week or two We're going where the sun shines brightly We're going where the sea is blue We've seen it in the movies Now let's see if it's true Everybody has a summer holiday Doing things they always wanted to So we're going on a summer holiday To make our dreams come true shines brightly We're going where the sea is blue We've seen it in the movies Now let's see if it's true Everybody has a summer holiday Doing things they always wanted to So we're going on a summer holiday To make our dreams come true
future's not ours to see. Que será, será? What will be, will be. Que será, será? Thank you. Then I can say hello, everybody. Yes. Mina, when everything okay with your end? Yes, 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 we are. People are admitting. Uh, who else is there? Tishana. Deep, is Deep inside? Deep has gone. Deep should be arriving shortly, I think. Okay, okay then. These are the people that I have unmuted. Okay. And that's you, um, Bhagirati, Lalit, Pai, Mina, and Trishala. We have to be, these are will be who will be always unmuted. Trishala is still muted. Uh, um. uh, but have you, yeah, we, we have unmuted her. She has to mute herself. Okay, so whenever time comes, Trishala, you can unmute yourself, yeah? Yeah. Good. Good, I think we have just a few minutes before we start. Thanks for unmuting, Trishala. You can hear us clearly? I can, that's right. Good, good, okay, wonderful. So I think it seems to be going okay. Is uh, Deep also around or...? He should I be logging in shortly. He should be logging in shortly, yes. Sure, sure, sure. So we still have, I believe, a couple minutes, three minutes, according to my um, mobile watch, that it says 3.27 in London time. So I wonder what it is in Kenya time. Is it the same? Are we okay? With yes, 5.30, Karibu. Karibu, Karibu. 5.30. <laughs> okay. 
Najua swahili kidogo kidogo mimi napenda hapana jua zaidi ya kidogo kidogo you are a kenyan boy i'm going to introduce to you to lohana majen to this time so most of the people knows your lahat babu kaka okay now no that is deep is admitted yeah, yeah, yeah. wonderful so deep's here lovely take it you want this Fishina is it almost uh, 5:30 at your end? Yes, it is almost 5:36. 5:36 am I right? Fishina can confirm yeah, Fishala, that. Fishina is it okay? Yeah, am I right? It's 5:28 it's currently so we're 2 minutes to 5:30. Okay. So Mina and Fishina and my clocks are are synchronizing quite well. Dupa <laughs> this is okay. I think it's a lovely afternoon all the way in London. It's the temperature here today is like 25 already. So for us 25 degrees is a nice summer day. People are out and about roaming around. Um unfortunately not everybody is wearing the mask over here. So it's a bit risky to go out at the moment. But it's a lovely day. I'm sure the temperatures in India are very hot anyway. In Kenya, are very hot. But when we get 25 degrees, we get excited over here. <laughs> Love, I'm happy to hear about the weather um, in London. Hi. I think so great. And you guys are having I a good time in Nairobi. Uh, yes, excellent time. Slightly windier at the moment. Okay. Um but general good weather. Good. Good. Okay, I think uh it's uh, 3:30 or UK time, uh 5:30 mm -hmm. Kenya time and 8 p.m. in India. So I think the three time zones are being covered quite effectively at this moment in time. So without any further delay, let us begin today's event. Uh, so may i say a very warm good afternoon good morning good evening from whichever part of the globe you're logging in with us today to this amazing seminar that has been organized by the lohana youth league of nairobi it's an amazing seminar entitled shangri la the calling of life by an inspirational a motivational speaker by the name of Dr. Bhagirath Singh Jadeja. So welcome to every guest on Zoom. This is internationally, globally being streamed on YouTube, on Facebook. So a warm welcome to all the viewers on this Zoom seminar, Shangri-La. Before we move on, let me introduce the wonderful guest of honor who we have all the way from India. Dr. Bhagirat Jadeja who is he let us find out about him this man has got mountains of secrets behind him so let's unreveal what this gentleman is all about he is the founder and the chairperson of Avahan your inner calling a corporate and an education consulting firm at the mere age of 31 he is one of india's youngest life coach and a success ecosystem designer he is a student of a world renowned life coach mr anthony robbins from the united states of america he is also a leadership trainer nlp coach nsc trainer a psychologist a counselor a mythologist and a therapist above all his contribution as a researcher is in the field of human psychology with amalgamation of mythology and culture and thereby facilitating human skills and value development for his outstanding contribution in the field of human skills and value development he has been honored with an honorary doctorate from the University of Minnesota in the United States of America 
and the Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand. He is also an author and his first novel called I'm Always With You has been published as a worldwide edition by Amazon.com and was released by one of the best-selling authors of India, Mr. Christopher Doyle. With an aim to bring about a transition in life of every individual that connects to him by facilitating them to discover what they are truly capable of. Dr. Jadeja has now touched lives of more than 2.5 lakh people all over the globe. A very smart, young, handsome man, a devoted husband, a dedicated son to his mother and a lovely father to his young son. Together, ladies and gentlemen, let us fold our hands and give him a standing ovation to this fine gentleman, Dr. Bhagirat Singh Jadeja. Can we spotlight you, Mr. Bhagirat? Are you there with us? Yes, I am here. Thank you so much. Okay, Thank you. welcome Thank you. on board. Welcome on board. So before we formally start today's event, uh, Dr. Bhagirat ji, uh, what we would like to do is this amazing organization in Nairobi, Kenya, which is the Lohana Youth League. These are a very hardworking group of people promoting wellness, promoting information, promoting amazing stuff amongst the Lohana community and the community of mankind at large. Today we have the president of the community who is going to be welcoming you, Mr. Deep uh, Bayani. It's actually Dr. Deep Bayani. Let me introduce you to him a little bit before he takes the floor. He is the community chairperson of the Lohana Youth League professionally. He is the head of a physiotherapy and a wellness center at the Ampisha Hospital. He is a doctor of medicine in acupuncture. He's an executive MBA in the healthcare leadership program. He's a bachelor's in physiotherapy and he's got a diploma in football medicine, FIFA, and he's a life member of the Indian Red Cross Society. An awesome personality, a hardworking individual. Let's welcome Mr. Deep, Dr. Deep Bayani to welcome Dr. Bhagirat Singh Jadeja. Welcome, Dr. Deep. Can you unmute yourself, Deep? Okay, Meena Ben, we need to unmute Deep Bayani, please. Yeah. Yeah. You can unmute yourself now, Deep. Deep, you can unmute. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Lalit, uh, Dr. Bhagirath, Meena Ben. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Deep. Uh, uh, first of all, I'll just like to give a small brief about Lohana Youth Click and then I can welcome Dr. Bhagirath officially. So I would like to say the Lohana Youth League is one of the five member institutions falling under the Lohana community. The Lohana Youth League comprises of a dedicated team and its unique offering ensures we can operate at local and regional levels, ensuring projects are undertaken efficiently and successfully. Within the Lohana Youth League, we take a highly specialized approach in our project planning process. We believe in teamwork and work in great synergy, giving members the opportunity to take responsibilities for the projects we initiate. Our large, num our large number of members essentially allow us to take each project and elect a lean team based on the strengths and vision of each member. The lean team mostly comprise of five to 10 members uh, and they hold the fort or, or during the entire duration from start to finish. And in doing, doing so, uh, they implement their various skills that made them stand out at the first place. The lean team then reaches out to the rest of the members once the strategy is in place to engage themselves in tasks required to bring the project to completion, thereby ensuring every project member is equally engaged in various projects. I would just like to inform everyone that the Youth League currently operates with a dedicated team of individuals who are culturally attuned to the ways of uh, working in Kenya. And it would be good for everyone to know that our, our society has a, member, uh, a number of 75 members of which 17 are core members. 
And when compiling our team, this is very important. Uh, our key concerns are around relevant sector experience, technical competencies, personal skills, client familiarity capacity, and immediate availability. We place the highest importance on building close working relationships with the organizations we engage with, like yours, and we are grateful to that. To, to accomplish this, we offer you uh, members who are culturally attuned to the business demands and are totally committed to our ethics to create a social impact. Lastly, I would just like to tell you, last year we, were, we, were, we received the Lohana Youth League was awarded as the best community organization of the year at the East FM Star Awards for their work and impact on social in general. Amongst the key considerations that the jury took into account were factors such as event organization, community work, and social impact. I'm very proud of my team and all the hard work they've been doing, and we continue to serve the community for this year and the coming years. And with such projects, we are very grateful, and thank you very much. And I would like to now officially welcome Dr. Bagirat, and I'm sure it will be an awesome talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deep. That was a very good uh, insight into what Lohana Community or Lohana Youth League has been doing. What a change from my days when I was there. Very active and very upbeat community spirit that you guys have. So well done, well done for that. And very proud to be uh, connected with the Lohana Community uh, Youth League of Nairobi. Unity is strength. And that's where it's taken you guys so far. So. Thank you very much for welcoming our lovely speaker for the afternoon. And Dr. Bhagirat Singh, this is your floor now. We invite you to just enlighten us with your motivational talk, Shangri-La, The Calling of Life. Let's hear what you've got to say. We'd love to hear the inspiration, the motivation that you're going to share with us. So it's all yours. Welcome on board. Everybody's on the screen. Please join, pull your hands and give Dr. Bhagirat a a closing welcome to start his talk. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Lalit Bhai. It is an immense pleasure and honor to be here. Minanti, thank you so much for hosting me. It is a pleasure to be here. It's a privilege, it's an honor to be here. I would also take this opportunity to thank Dr. Deep who very kindly welcomed me on behalf of uh, Luana Youth League. Thank you so much, Dr. Deep. And also, Ramesh Bhai. If he had not taken the lead, uh, I would not have been here. I take this opportunity to thank him also. So, uh, namaste all of you. And it's an immense honor and privilege to be here. Forget uh, I, can I stop you for one second? Please, please, please. All Sorry about that. The lovely lady who wants to also make sure that you're welcomed. She is waiting loud and clear. Mina Ben, with all due respect to her, with the seniority, may I request her to, before we start your show, to please welcome you because she is absolutely excited in doing so. Please, please, please. It will be my honor. Mina Ben, go ahead. Thank you. Um, before anything, I would like to introduce our Ellie, who is uh, admitting everybody and helping uh, me. And hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I have got, I won't, if I stand up, then you won't be able to see my head. So <laughs> here it is. Uh, Bhagirat. Yes, Minanti. Yes, you can hear me. Okay. This is Chandlo for you. And, and Chokha. <laughs> and I will say, uh, Arti to welcome you here. Yes. And you love flowers. Today you're going to talk about it. These are the flowers for you today. Lovely roses from my garden, which I showed you day before yesterday. Yes, yes, Minan. Is yours? Yes. And little heart. Okay, now, uh, Lalit, do I continue with uh, welcoming or shall I? You continue with your welcome speech, Minan. Yeah. 
ग्लोबल नमस्ते टू ऑल गुड इवनिंग जाम्बो करीबू बिहाफ ऑफ डॉक्टर ललित एंड माई हु इज माई कजिन गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू अ ब्यूटिफुल फ्लेमिंग गो टाउन ऑफ नकुरु वेलकम लोहाना यूथ लीग एंड यंग स्पीकर डॉक्टर भागीरथ जडेजा I love the name Bhagirath. The reason is Bhagirath was the one who brought the Ganges river in this world and river Ganges is my favorite. I visit every year. When I spoke to you on video call yesterday or day before you showed me a beautiful flowers a tree which had a flowers which which are called parijat it is night jasmine and has very soothing smell white and orange in color you will tell us more about it when you tell us about your motivation speech as well ladies and gentlemen now i will introduce to you my humble due it is my humble duty to introduce dr lalit soda the backbone of the this session and every session dr lalit bhai is a doctor of cardiopathic currently practicing in london he is a public speaker in his profession and conducts many many events as an mc at corporate levels currently is a busy guest speaker internationally on zoom he has authored a book about pushti mark this is the book he has authored and he is a kenya toto son of Ms. mrs banu ben and amrit bhai soda ex barclays bank ha apra luanda wala tumne yaad che ne ola mami keta ramkuwar ben eno dikro babu babudio babu no dikro a in luanda either it is babu baburyo or babu bhai so here you are over to you lalit bhai thank you mina ben <laughs> that that introduction actually made me laugh and brought some chuckles to me too so thank you very much without any further delay over to you dr bhagirath singh looking forward to your talk thank you very much thank you so much mina aunty that was really touching and amazing i mean i have been conducting so many webinars and sessions throughout this uh, pandemic but uh, you know I, i i have never been welcomed in such a way that is so 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 really wonderful that that's that's uh, amazing and yes what the flowers you were talking about i keep it on my desk where i am working uh, you will see a bit of those flowers here i think these are the ones you are talking about the parijat flowers yes and uh, I, i thanks to you i got to know that lalit bhai has uh, written such a good book i was not aware of that uh, thank you so this these flowers are actually parijat and for the information of all i mean majority of the people who are very senior and uh, elder and connected to vaishnav sampradaya might be knowing this that parijat is one of the nine ratnas which came out in samudra mantra and um, when krishna killed narkasur satyabhama saw the parijat in heaven and satyabhama wanted that parijat uh, tree in her garden so krishna asked lord indra for that and uh, 
Lord Indra denied it. So Krishna fought with Indra and brought Parijat to the earth. That's how Parijat came to the earth. That's the mythological story which goes on like that. So yes, Minavan, such a good start with those flowers. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, it is absolute honor and privilege to be here amongst all of you. So, Namaste Kim Chobada. It's good to see so many new faces. Yes, 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 yes it's good to see. A lockdown, ma, koi nava faces joa malin, it feels good. Baki ek ne ek faces joa na mein to kanta di gaya ji. It's good to see new faces. It's an absolute honor. How are you all? All good? All good? Yes. Okay, I, I, everyone, those who are on camera and those whose cameras are off, I, I would like to start with something. Uh, if you all can sit straight, a bit straight. Okay? Yes, good. Uh, and I want you all to breathe. Breathe deeply. Take three deep breaths. Undo swans, deep breath. Yes. Again, now take a deep breath in. Hold. Exhale. And hold. Again, breathe. Hold. Exhale. And hold. Okay. This is something called square breathing. And, and this, is, this has a very subtle effect. Right? So uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to be here. When Ramesh Bhai first uh, told me about uh, this, this platform, when Ramesh Bhai introduced me to this, I was very, very pleased. And I was so very thrilled because uh, it is so good that you, whatever you all are doing is really commendable. I mean, when the world is facing such dark times and the entire human race is facing the question of existence, we are facing so much negative things all around. To do something that is really positive and that can not just affect your life, but lives of everyone across the globe, I think that is something really, really amazing. You are doing a powerful and commendable job. Okay, uh, to start off with, uh, I'll not talk on Corona. I don't want to start and I don't want to talk on Corona. I don't want to talk on COVID-19. The reason is pure and simple. Uh, you all are hearing so much about Corona as such. I don't want to add to it. You know, everywhere across the globe, we are talking about Corona. We are talking on COVID-19. I mean, people are dying. People are losing their jobs. Businesses and markets are going down. It's crashing. You know, uh, the, the relationships are in turmoil. People are facing challenges. There are breakups, there are divorces, there are family uh, disputes. There is domestic violence cases across the globe. Mental health is getting affected. There is depression, there is anxiety is increasing, pain is increasing, worry is increasing. All such things are happening across and only one thing to blame and that is Corona. So I don't think Corona is the issue. I don't think the issue is Corona, issue is us. And therefore I don't want to talk on Corona, I want to talk on us. I want to talk on people, I want to talk on life. And therefore when uh, we were discussing, I mean that happened in just one meeting when we were talking, uh, Lalit Bhai and me were talking and this Shangri-La, I said, I'm going on with a movement these days that is Shangri-La calling of life. So he said, yes, this is the perfect title. I think we should talk on this. So yes, I'm going to talk on life. I'm going to talk on us. I'm going to talk on people. Uh, I would like to start with uh, a small story of how Shangri-La came in mind and how Shangri-La was formed. Uh, years back, uh, when I was very small, when I was very young, I was a student. One of the first novel that I read, the first book that I read was uh, Harry Potter. So when I was reading that Harry Potter, there was this one phrase 
that was you know really thrilling me it was you know making me very it was giving me goosebumps and chills that harry potter the chosen one so whenever i used to read that harry potter the chosen one i used to feel ke okay, you know how thrilling and adventurous it would be to be the chosen one i mean it's it's amazing to be the chosen one and i always dreamt ke okay, okay i also want to be a chosen one cast mui chosen one both i used to feel that then years passed many things changed in life years later i became a father and i felt the need to read the fairy tales again fairy stories again magical stories again so again i picked up harry potter and when i took that harry potter book and i started reading i again read that phrase harry potter the chosen one and for few minutes for few moments i felt that thrill again but then i realized that being a chosen one was actually a burden it was loneliness it was pain and the word that thrilled me was no more making a sense it was not thrilling me anymore and so i ask people this is my habit i keep on asking people whom i know questions to my guru to my teachers to my coaches my parents my friends i keep on asking them questions and i ask all these people ke why something that thrilled me years back now it is no more thrilling me why is that and at that time you know the answer which i got was oh come on you have grown up you have become mature and that when i question myself ke okay, have i done anything wrong by growing up or have i done anything wrong by becoming mature that something that was making me happy is no more making me happy and that is where the journey of shangrila started where i started you know my journey to get the answer to the questions there's those were there in my mind i realized that in our search of questions in our search of knowing how to live learning how to live we forget to live kevi rite jivu ane jivan ma su karvu ama jivta j bhuli jay chhe i mean i i am seeing all the age groups here there are elders also there are youngsters also and i whenever i take this sessions i ask people to hey, just take a moment and ask yourself when was the last time you laughed your heart out like a child have to kain only bay by bay centimeter ni smile avi jaye avi khuli na hasta to bada bhuli gaya so we have become so sophisticated we 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 don't laugh also loudly i i remember I, i years back i was in a session in hyderabad and there was a convocation of the university and i was invited as the chief guest and the guest of honor was one of a leading personality i'll not take the name is one of the leading personality in the field of information and technology so when the anchor was introducing there was a slip of tongue so instead of introducing him as a computer wizard he introduced him as a computer hazard and a total silence everyone was quiet your guest of honor is insulted ave so and i was the only one who was sitting on the stage and i was laughing ha 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 and everyone is looking at me ar ar hase se are pan ema haswa se ve hatu so vadu ma su kar se biji var bolao se ne etlu ne pa jivan ma hasta to sikho life after jivan jivan no sikhwa mane sikhwa ma in the struggle of making a better life the day we start earning not just earning actually you know in india i always say it starts when you are in grade 10 board ni exam dai dio etle life set pachi 11 12th ni exam dai dio etle life set pachi college kari lyo etle shanti ena pachi thoda settle thai jao etle shanti e shanti koi di avti j nahi we are in the journey of going towards peace and we never achieve peace we want to be happy we are not happy 
And this, this entire journey was to search this answer. And I realized that instead of telling people how to live, I need to create a platform where people can realize that it is about living. Life is to live, not to learn how to live. And that makes all the difference. We need to live. We need to start living, whether you are young, whether you are old, whether you of whether you're of any age, whether you are poor, whether you are rich, at any platform of your life, wherever you are, we need to just live. We need not to ask how to live. Shangri-La, I search this word, I'm a mythologist also, and my major work is in the field of mythology and psychology. And 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 uh, you know, I, I realized this word, uh, the Shangri-La, it's a place, it's not heaven, it's something on earth, people are trying to reach there, it's a mystical place where people are going, they are searching. So I realized Shangri-La is not about going somewhere, actually Shangri-La is about creating something. So today I'm going to talk on Shangri-La, calling of life, that means how you can create Shangri-La. Corona is there, it's going to be there for some time and then it's going to go. The world will go on. Yes, many will are no more with us. World has changed, but life will go on. So how can we create life? How can we make our life better? How can we create Shangri-La here? That's what I'm going to talk on. So I am not going to take much of your time because I would rather have the question answers more rather than the speech. So uh, and I will be you know, putting it in terms of seven things, seven steps, seven sutras of creating Shangri-La. So I'll be giving quickly those seven things. First, do not try to be God. I mean, somewhere I'm realizing the humans are trying to be God. Don't do that. We are trying to feel only positive emotions. We are trying to feel only good emotions. We are trying to feel only those emotions which are empowering. We, no, we are not taking certain emotions. You cannot do that. You are humans. No, when a child is very small, we, you know, when a child starts crying, what we say to a child? Hey, don't cry. You are very strong. You should not cry. But it's okay to cry. It's okay to feel bad. It's okay to feel down. It's okay to feel jealous. It's okay to feel angry. It is okay to feel all the emotions of life because we are human. Try to be human, don't try to be God. If you want to be complete in your life, majority of the people are stuck in their lives because they are trying to be something that they are not. Don't do that. Half emotions, the emotions that are suppressed, the feelings that is ignored, emotions that are not addressed are going to affect you very badly. I mean, everyone has experienced this. If something is there in our teeth, so what happens? Our tongue will constantly go there. Whether we like it or we don't like it, whether we want it or we don't want it, it will constantly go there. Similar thing happens with emotion. The emotion that you don't address, the emotion that you don't accept, it is going to affect you. It will go on coming in your mind again and again and again. So don't try to be God. It's okay to be human. Complete tiare thai shaki sikko ej saacho je banne side printed hoi. Ek side printed sikko ne khoto sikko keva. So it is not okay to have only one type of emotion. It's okay to have all the types of emotion. It's okay to feel good, good. It's okay to feel bad also. We always suppress it. Suppose if I'm talking with Lalit Bhai and if I'm you know, good friends with Lalit Bhai and suddenly, you know, looking at him and he's doing progress in his life and everything good is happening in his life. Suddenly, if I feel jealous, the moment I start feeling jealous, I'll, I'll start telling myself, oh, no, 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 no. 
I am feeling jealous. I should not be feeling jealous. Arey, it's okay. You are human. Feel it for that moment. Let it go later on. But whatever you are feeling, accept it, na? Why are you trying to be God? This positive thinking. I don't believe in positive thinking. By the way, being a life coach, I don't believe in positive thinking. I believe in positive attitude. Positive thinking will never help you in life. Positive attitude will help you. Suppose if you are going on a road, and if something pricks your feet, do positive thinking. Mane nathi dukto, mane nathi dukto, mane nathi dukto. The brain will say mane nathi dukto. Pug will say mane dukhe chhe. It's not going to help you. So don't try to be God. Completeness will only come when you accept everything. When Mina Ben was introducing, she you know, introduced us to a very good book that is written by Lalit Bai. That is Pushti Mark. Pushti Mark is related to Sri Nagji Krishna, and for me, Krishna is Mahamana. He is before God. He is Mahamana, a person who taught us how to live. So, if you talk about Krishna, if you look at Krishna's life and for a second forget that Krishna is God, you will see that Krishna. Has accepted everything. Krishna has taken every bit of emotion. He took the blessings also. He took the curse also, and therefore Krishna is who he is. Accept everything. Only then you can live life. So first, don't try to be God. Be human. Do not suppress anything. Be complete. Accept it. Second point: Understand the science of achievement versus art of fulfillment. Achievement is a science. You can achieve anything. It's a science. You do certain things in your life. You work in a certain way. You follow the processes. You will achieve something in your life. Achievement is a science. There is nothing wrong. Fulfillment is an art. Not everyone can master it, and everyone has a different way. So, if you are mastering science of achievement, also master the art of fulfillment, because without art of fulfillment, you will not reach anywhere in your life. Third, understand the mechanism of emotions. We all feel emotions. Atyarepan, there are so many people here. There are people who are watching us live, but we all are feeling emotions. We are feeling something right now. Whatever we are doing, we are doing out of emotion. But hardly we take time to understand those emotions. I'll tell you, there are two fundamental forces in life. Life appreciation, ne, if just so the most senses and whatever my. teachers my coaches have taught me there are two fundamental forces in life one whatever we do we do either to avoid pain or second to gain pleasure whatever we are doing either we are doing it to avoid pain or to gain pleasure think about it all your emotions either they are to avoid pain or to gain pleasure you want to do something because either it will give you pleasure or you are trying to do it to avoid your pain so whatever we are doing we are doing either to avoid pain or to gain pleasure but we are not no focusing on that we are not looking at it we are not even trying to understand it i mean i am seeing there are so many courses on anger management i'm just giving an example there are so many courses on anger management even when i'm counseling people you know i counsel almost 20 people per day and when i'm counseling people this is one thing no sir mere mane bahut gusso aave ch how to control anger i get angry so much how can i control my anger you cannot control your anger no one can control anger because anger is the end product before you are angry you are frustrated before you are frustrated you are irritated before you are irritated you are anxious before you are anxious 
you are afraid and before you are afraid you are insecure so if you want to deal with your anger you should deal with your insecurity you need to understand the mechanism of emotion tamara emotions kya thi aave we never take time to understand that and whatever we are calling emotions it's not emotions it's expression of emotions when can you say someone loves you chalo forget love how can you say someone is happy okay i'm looking at meena ben and then i say okay meena aunty is very happy how can i say meena aunty is happy her face her smile a look is going to tell me that she is happy or suppose if i am saying okay, okay i am angry how will you know i am angry by the physiology you will have a look at me you will see me in anger you will feel my eyes are red i am i am shaking with anger and then you say okay he seems to be very angry whatever we are saying emotions they are actually not emotions they are expression of emotions and you need to we all need to understand this that we feel our emotions through our body and if we want to control our emotions if we want to deal our emotions if we want to understand our emotions we have to use our body we need to use our physiology to understand our emotions we need to use our body to deal with our emotions right okay i am giving you just simple example everyone here i am giving you 2 minutes in just 2 minutes think about one of the worst experience of your life the experience jena thi tumhe bahut dukhi ho worst experience of your life take a minute the moment you think about that experience you will start feeling bad right now do one thing everyone smile the best smile you can give smile yeah now hold that smile do not change that smile do not leave that smile and try to think about that bad experience now you don't have to lose your smile try to do that it will not happen either you will lose your smile or you will not be able to think about the bad memory your body controls your emotions your emotions controls your body and it is directly connected imagine yourself we all have this when we are afraid what happens there something happens in stomach when you are stressed you have a headache your physiology is directly directly connected to your emotions and your emotions are directly connected to your body so understand the mechanism of your emotions try to know what you are feeling loko na khabar ji nahi hoti ki humne feel so thai in my counseling in almost 90% of counseling cases it takes me one hour to figure out what that person is feeling because he himself is not aware ki what he is feeling and just on a lighter note apne kai type no ko but suppose in your family or in your friend circle at your workplace somewhere you saw someone who is feeling totally down he is depressed totally depressed totally totally down and suddenly that person walks in and you are looking at that person and suddenly you feel ke ha this person is very down so what do you do you ask that person ke bhai so kyu ke ma je down cho and the person has no reason and person is saying i don't know i'm not feeling good today and what do we say ha ah, i understand are he is not understanding why he is down and you understand and suppose the person is very happy he is coming jumping dancing whooping and he is very happy and you say oh you seem to be very happy today what happened and then he says oh i don't know i'm just very happy what will you say gando thai gyo shu are you mad have you lost it em nem to koi dance karata sa 
This means you need a reason to be happy, but you don't need a reason to be sad. This is the mechanism of emotion that we are living in. And therefore, we are attracted to negativity so much. You go to a road, when you come down to India, you go to a road. If you know there are some Madarika Khel happening on the roads, there are poor people who are performing at some places. How many people are standing there and looking at those things that are happening? Two, three, four, five? Not more than that. But suppose if two people are fighting, how many people will be there on road? We love to see those things. We don't understand the emotions. We don't take time to understand what we are feeling. And how can we live life without understanding what we are feeling? We need to deal with that. So second thing, the third thing was that, understand the mechanism of emotion. Fourth, learn the art of letting go after feeling it. In the first I said, feel all the emotions, feel it and let it go. People are not letting it go. They are holding to things for years and years and years. I think majority of people here are married. Yeah. So they all will be very experienced. When a husband and wife fights, the topic on which they are fighting, it is valid only for two or three minutes. After three minutes, all the old topics, they come. Juna juna badda gade. What is the topic? What are you fighting on? Why are you coming to the old things again and again? We are not letting it go. If you feel angry, feel it. It's okay to feel angry. Let that anger pass. Don't hold that anger. If you feel down, it's okay to feel down. Feel it, but then let it go. If someone has hurt you, fight with that person if you feel like fighting, but okay, after the fight, let it go. Don't do that. Don't hold on to things. And we suppress all the things. I'll tell you one thing. I'm giving you one, one figure, a fact. In India, in last three months, the depression cases have gone high by 74%. And the suicide cases in India have increased by 33% in last two months. People, like relationships, I, out of 10 cases I received in a day on counseling, seven cases are having issues in relationships. Reason? What this pandemic has actually done, what this corona has actually done, has showed us the mirror of who we are and who we were. Do you think we are losing jobs because of corona? No, we are not losing jobs because of corona, but in a situation where the company felt the need to throw out people, we are the one who are not performing well and they are thrown out. Do you think people are dying only because of corona? No. Immunity is not able to resist back. We have not worked for years on our immunity. Do you think the relationships are getting affected because of corona? No. Everything was suppressed under Rakhine Betata. Suddenly it is coming out. Therefore, it is happening. I'll give you one simple example. All the ladies here, all the beautiful and gracious ladies here, they will be aware. Because Gujarati community shares, they will be very much aware. You know, in India, and if you go to an old house, if you remember, Maria system. Right? Now, when you look at that, Diwali Masha ni Maria ni saaf safai sharu thai. 
so they take out everything with a determination that they are going to throw away half the things and clean the maria but when they take it out na everything starts a to hu mara peer thi lavi thi a to mehman aave tyare joy ane kada jarur padse a to haji navu ch che a to kada j rakhu joy khabar nahi jarur pade ke ne and at the end everything goes back to that maria that is how we deal with the discussions and issues in life we sit to discuss we take out all the issues again we take it back and keep it in our mind and bottle it up we don't throw it away and when we deal how we deal i'll tell you there was this incident in south india there was this this fellow who came to a pharmacist shop to buy medicines so just beside that shop there was a pole electricity pole and he found one man clinging to that pole so that fellow asked that shopkeeper that pharmacist okay who is he and why is he clinging to that pole so that pharmacist said oh he is my no customer he is suffering from loose motion uh, he is suffering from cough and i gave him the medicine therefore he is clinging so that uh, fellow asked him what medicine did you give that he is clinging to that pole he said he came here for cough and cough syrup and i gave him a laxative he said if he came here for cough syrup why did you give him a laxative he said now let him there and cough that's how we deal the issues in life the problem is somewhere else and we are dealing at some other place we suppress and then something like this happens when we are forced to face it because life actually forces everyone to face the situation and when something like this happens bank we are depressed we are in stress life doesn't seem right there is so much pain and that we are not able to take it so learn the art of letting it go after feeling it feel the emotions it's okay to feel all the emotions in life but feel it and let it go that's fourth thing fifth develop your self awareness people are not aware what is happening in their life the survey says 92 people percent 92 percent people on planet are not aware of what is happening in their lives develop self awareness and what is the difference between mind and self awareness if i can tell you quickly because you now i'm trying to give you so much in very less time so i am just quickly telling you so that you understand what is the difference between mind and self awareness consider a big bungalow with so many rooms that is mind different sections with different rooms and take a ball of light which can no just go around that ball of light is awareness wherever that ball of light will go that room will shine self awareness is a key to control mind you cannot control mind you can control self awareness be aware of what is happening in your life people are not even aware what is exactly they are feeling they are not aware what is happening with their relationships they are not even aware what is happening with their health they are not even aware what is happening with at their job at their business don't be an ignorant person be self aware self awareness is the key to control mind if you want to create shangri la the power engine is self awareness if you want to hear the calling of life it is self awareness only through self awareness you can hear about your life what life is trying to tell you sixth communicate talk if not to anyone talk to yourself majority of the people they don't talk with their own selves do not do that if you are not talking to yourself every day trust me you are depriving yourself to talk to one of the best person on the planet 
talk to yourself communicate even in relationship even at work try to communicate people are not communicating and the people are not even understanding what is communication we do not listen to understand we listen to respond we do not listen to understand we listen to respond if i say about communication i'll give you an interesting principle sapta vada nyayam you know it's sapta vada nyayam a gujarati went to south india listen to this story it's funny but it has a very strong message a gujarati went to south india and uh, he was very hungry he wanted to eat something so uh, he went to one of the restaurants and he asked the waiter what do you have in your restaurant which can relinquish my hunger so that waiter said ke we have this vada mendu vada south indians they have we have this vada so that vada is going to you know relinquish your hunger so he said the gujarati asked how much for the vada that can relinquish my hunger the waiter said 5 rupees 5 rupees for one vada so gujarati said okay bring one vada so he ate one but his hunger was not relinquished so he took the second then the third fourth fifth sixth and he reached to the seventh vada after eating the seventh vada his hunger was relinquished then he went to the counter to pay the manager asked the waiter how much the waiter said 35 rupees 7 into 5 35 rupees so the gujarati took out 5 rupees coin and he put that coin on the counter so that person said sir 35 rupees gujarati said i was very clear from the beginning i asked you how much for the vada that could relinquish my hunger your seventh vada relinquished my hunger till i eat eight of the six vadas i was still hungry the seventh vada relinquished the hunger so i'll only pay for the seventh vada that is sapta vada nyayam that is the art of communication 90% of the things that you talk is you are preparing the opposite person for communication only 10% is communication there are six vadas then the seventh vada so first prepare a person to understand you then you come to the point many a time people directly say the point seventh vada no it will not relinquish the hunger sometimes people say everything they present very well but six vada they forget the seventh vada so the communication never happens this is sapta vada nyaya give six vada prepare the person to take what you want to say then give the seventh vada that is the art of communication we need to understand this from business world to relationships people are not understanding this art of communication Okay. if i put it in a small mythological way if you have seen the brahmin first they put that chandan yellow then they put the lal tilak and then they put the chawal chandan is you consider a, a a you know field where you are going to plow first you need to clean it then you put the red then you plow the field and then you put the seed thank you very much bagarati it was so nice thank you so much right so there this is about communication are waiting there are some questions are waiting so maybe we can ah, yes i think we'll take the questions now the thank six you things very much very remember much. these six things what i said first don't try to be god second understand the signs of achievement worse is the art of fulfillment sec third understand the mechanism of emotions fourth learn the art of letting go fifth develop your self awareness sixth communication now seventh point is remaining but that i'll give you at last 
because I want everyone to have a meditation and go with something really good. So my seventh point is going to be the meditation that I let you all do at the end. So I think first we'll take some questions. If there are questions, Lalit Bhai. Thank you. Thank you, Bhagirath Bhai. It was an amazing uh, seven steps to Shangri-La. And we are definitely looking forward to the seventh step. But due to the time constraints that we have, we will definitely discuss the seventh step. As you said, we do not want to miss out on that. There are some Thank questions you. that have been presented to us prior to the talk, and a couple have come up on the chat box. So Bhagirath Bhai, once again, thank you. And the first question comes up is, can you please give a way in which people can make decisions not emotionally? I think uh, we should not even try doing that. A person has to take decisions emotionally only. If you remove emotion out, you will never be able to take a decision. The problem is this, the problem is not okay, you are taking decisions emotionally, to be very frank. Problem is not that you are taking the decisions emotionally. Problem is you don't know where to differentiate between logic and emotions. That's the problem. It's, it's okay to take decisions emotionally, but as I said, when you are focusing on your self-awareness more, you will also understand what needs to be done. I always put it in terms, in a sentence, a time comes in your life when you have to choose between what is right and what is easy. Not right and wrong. It's right and easy. Majority of the times, we choose something which is very easy. And that's when we say we have taken a decision emotionally. So I would suggest two things here. First, do not be afraid of emotions. It's okay if you are taking decisions emotionally. But become more self-aware. When you will be more and more self-aware, you will understand where the logic is coming. And when the logic will come into place, you will know work decisions to take. Secondly, if you are afraid to take any decision, <clears throat> then keep one thing in your mind. Trust yourself. People don't trust their own selves. If the decision goes wrong also, if you have taken a decision emotionally, and even if the decision goes wrong, if you trust yourself, you will be able to tackle the situation that will come. Do not try to make the situation very predictable. It's okay to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. If I sit here and if I'm talking today, that doesn't mean that I have done everything right in my life. Trust me, every decision that I have taken in my life is emotional decision. And I am where I am because I have taken the decisions emotionally. So yes, you... I have made mistakes. So it's okay to make mistakes. Yes, a little bit. So would you say it's okay to make emotional decisions, but learn or have the ability to distinguish between logic and emotion? Is that what you're trying to say to the, uh, the question? Uh, okay, I, I'll put it in a very, very uh, simple way. Lalit Bhai, you are a doctor. When your patient comes to you for a treatment, you deal with the back pain. You deal with the entire back portion, the vertebral column, right? When a patient is coming to you, when the treatment starts, or when you, supposedly when you started your career, how did you get your expertise? By working on it. Exactly, that's what needs to be done with the emotional decision. Take decisions emotionally, but start observing. Become self-aware. The more you are becoming self-aware, you will know where to control the emotions and how to make emotions your strength to take decisions rather than your weakness. As you mentioned earlier, in the seven points to Shangri-La, self-awareness is the key point. It's the key point. It's the engine that is going to control your whole life. Brilliant. The more you are self-aware, the more you can control your emotions. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I hope the question gets answered there. The next question. So I would also like to remind all the viewers that if you have any burning question, please send it on the chat box. We will make every attempt that these questions are answered 
So once again, viewers, send questions on the chat box. The next question is, how should the youth of today think to avoid the anxiety and depression? As you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, whether it's COVID related or whether it's general life related. How should the youth avoid getting into that matter of anxiety and depression? Okay, uh, two things here. Firstly, it cannot be avoided. I'll tell you why. Anxiety is a natural phenomenon. It is, it, is, it, is, it is imbibed in human biological system, the fight and flight response. When do you get anxious? When something that happens which you don't know, something that you cannot predict, at that time you become anxious. So anxiety is natural. Depression is a state. And unfortunately in today's time, people have started taking depression as something in a it's a fashion statement. It is something like a trend. Oh, I am depressed. Oh, this is depressing. So depression, people have started taking it as a trend. Depression is something much more complicated to understand than what people are thinking these days. So anxiety cannot be addressed. And when anxiety, if you are not able to control anxiety, then it will lead you to depression. So if I put it in very simple terms and in a very short and quick way, when you feel anxious, when you are feeling the anxiety, take time out, sit, feel the anxiety and understand why you are feeling that anxiety. There is a reason you are feeling anxiety, something you don't know. And when you are addressing something that you don't know, if you accept it, yes, okay, I don't know this, then anxiety will automatically disappear. The more you try to avoid anxiety, you will get pushed towards depression. So instead of avoiding anxiety and depression, face anxiety, you will never have depression. Anxiety means you don't know something and it's okay to feel anxious. Don't run away from anxiety. You don't know something, it's okay. You don't know. Then try to know. Once you accept it, you will. your brain will automatically figure out the ways how to know what you don't know. And when the brain will automatically start figuring out the ways, anxiety will go. But if you suppress the anxiety, if you avoid the anxiety, you will go towards depression. And just for the information of everyone, depression is not a disease. Depression is a state of mind. Like we are happy, we are sad, we are angry, we are jealous. Depression is a state, it's not a disease. People consider it a disease and therefore they are not very keen to talk about it. Don't do that. And depression is very, very, very complex level of negative thoughts. When you reach to that, then you are depressed. Otherwise, what you are feeling is anxiety and anxiety pro, if I can use the words in terms of technology. So anxiety pro is something which we consider depression. It's not depression. So don't avoid anxiety face it, then you will never have depression. Thank you very much for addressing that. Deep, thank you for asking those questions. We're getting quite a few questions coming up, Bhagirath Bhai. So we'll try to address as many with a good short, sweet answer so we can address as many questions as we can, if that's yeah. right. So yeah. the next question from Samir says, if anyone overcomes his emotions with regards to matters that concern him the most, will a person be able to work out a better way to approach the same concern that he was emotionally not able to cope with? If they is overcome the once, are you is able the to question overcome? there in the chat box? I would like to read that question. It's there in the chat box? It's in the chat box, yes. Second okay. question says, if when anyone, anyone overcomes, overcomes his emotion with regards to matters that concerns him the most, will a person uh, be able to work out a better way to approach the same concern that he is emotionally not able to cope. Yes. Once we are able to overcome the emotions, see, whenever something new comes, life is all about experiences that I always put it. When we experience something new, we will have all the set of new emotions. And we don't know how to face that. Once we are able to stabilize and when we are able to channelize these emotions, 
next time when we face the similar situation we will be having less difficulty to face it it's just like you know, when you go to gym when you start working out first for initially you will feel that pain in the muscles but more you work out lesser the pain you become more efficient so once you deal out with the emotions you know overcome those emotions next time you will face little difficulty but it will be you no know, gradually it will go less and less and you will be able to you know deal with it more easily so yes once you overcome those emotions you will be able to thank you very much bhagrat bhai for samir uh, lalakia thank you for the question the next question is a very interesting one and quite a, a, a common question or something that needs to be addressed sapna says in our culture women are told to control their anger and emotions how do we change this how can we bring the emotional equality very interesting question yes, <laughs> very said, interesting yes. question uh see um when we say culture okay and this is something related to men and women equality it's a very very uh, complex way it is portrayed so when i say when it in terms of culture women are asked to control their anger and emotions the reason behind that is from time immemorial a woman is the controlling factor the center of the whole family and if the center gets disturbed everything is going to get disturbed so the people try to say control your anger i am saying don't control your anger and emotions learn to channelize that anger and emotions because even if you are suppressing it you are creating a big mistake later on it's going to explode like anything so when it comes down to emotional equality i will always say we are dealing with human emotions whether we are a man or a woman it is about human emotions feel it if someone is telling you to control your anger understand what i said when i was talking about uh, the seven ways to shangri la it's not about emotion it's about expression of emotions so what you can control is the expression of emotions rather than the emotions so learn to channelize or change the way to deal with the expression of emotions rather than controlling the emotions controlling emotions is not going to help you emotional equality is the right of every human being you are free to feel all the emotions feel it it's okay and if people are not taking your emotions it's their problem firstly let me be very blunt it's their problem you have the right to feel all the emotions and if people are not taking your emotions and if you are getting affected trust me you have given the control of your life to someone else and when the life is not in your hand you cannot talk about equality thank you so, bhagrat bhai this is what it is i got five other questions over here which i would love to ask time is flying fast so we'll try to address them as best as we can Uh, you got some amazing wealth of information that you want to share i don't think we are giving justice to you by telling us all these answers in a short space of time you've got volumes to share I, 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 no I, if 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 it is okay to everyone i'll not mind extending my time 10 15 minutes but let sure. us take all the maximum questions that we sure. can sure so we'll try so to that, do that obviously yeah. others because of different time zones people have different commitments and stuff so exactly exactly i'm quite mindful of that also so moving on to the next question uh you are a success you you mentioned in your introduction you are a success ecosystem designer so you can give some tips for reviving jobs businesses post covid or any circumstances can you share very briefly some tips that would be for good for reviving jobs and businesses in this climate okay uh to be very quick and to be very uh precise the, the definition of normal has definitely changed after covid 19 so we let us be very specific if you are doing a job understand one thing and learn one thing in your mind it's going to be about quality now if you are not giving quality at your work you are going to lose your job sooner or later 
So focus everything to improve your quality. If you need to learn something more, learn. If you find need to find more ways, find more ways. If you need to learn how to speak and connect to people more deeply, do that. You need to give more quality. Only quality is going to save your job. Even if you lose your job because of any circumstances or situation, unfortunately, then you will get a good job if you are focusing only on the quality of your productivity. So focus on your quality. That is going to help you. Second, when it comes down to business, adapt to new technology and new processes. Think about what is going to come next. When entire world is going down, you all know Ambani is going, doing major profits. Add up to new technology. During the lockdown, even this Kanyana store, the provision store near our house, who has never used any technology, not even a digital payment, because of this COVID-19 situation, he gave WhatsApp number to all of us. And he said, if you need anything, any groceries, just send me the list, I'll deliver it at your home. That's how your business grow. Adapt to new technology and new processes. More you get adapted to those things, your business is going to go ahead. Think about what is coming next. Look two steps ahead. That's where your business grows. So two things if I have to give very quickly for this COVID-19 or post-COVID-19, if you are in a job, focus on the quality. If you are in the business, Think two steps ahead and add up to new technology and new processes. I think that's where it's going to grow. Thank you. That's an amazing two tips. I'm making notes of this, Bhagirath Pai. Uh, I think you're sharing an amazing thing there. Now, next question. You are a mythologist and a life coach. So what are your views on Srimad Bhagavad Gita? We can sit all day and talk about it, I know. But just a short view. World's first motivational speech and what should be done to awaken interest of the young generation into the Bhagavad Gita? Okay. When it comes down to Bhagavad Gita, I think it was the first motivational speech given by Lord Krishna to Archer. But we need to understand a few facts about Bhagavad Gita. Firstly, stop reading Bhagavad Gita as a religious book. Only then you will understand what is there in Bhagavad Gita. Secondly, there is a myth. That Bhagavad Gita means what Krishna said to Arjun. No, that is not Bhagavad Gita. When Krishna was saying something to Arjun, whatever Sanjay saw and told Dhritarashtra, that is the Bhagavad Gita which we are reading. So we need to understand the view by which we are reading Bhagavad Gita. So what you asked about Bhagavad Gita, I think what we should do, I, you know, when people go out in the market, firstly they get confused because there are so many versions of Bhagavad Gita. So I only recommend one version because it is, I've gone through many versions of Bhagavad Gita in my research work. For everyone, I recommend only one version of Bhagavad Gita, that is Bhagavad Gita as it is by ISKCON. That is the Bhagavad Gita without any interpretation. It is the translation. So it is the Bhagavad Gita. So get, get that copy and read Bhagavad Gita. If not, whole chapter, read even if one sentence or one shloka you can and read in the language you are comfortable with. It's not necessary to read it in English. If you are comfortable with Gujarati, read in Gujarati. In Hindi, it's okay. But the second part of your question was connected to youth. If you want to connect the youngsters to Bhagavad Gita, don't tell them to read Bhagavad Gita. Involve them into activities and the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Like I conduct uh, this advisory program in the school based on Bhagavad Gita, that is Sanatan advisory that I do. In that advisory program, instead of teaching them Bhagavad Gita, every week we give a theme based on the chapters of Bhagavad Gita and they do the activities. And based on those activities, they get interested to know more about Bhagavad Gita and then they start reading. And there is also something that I'm very soon coming up with, that is Yutheshwar's Gita. I will give the name Yuth, Yutheshwar's Gita. That is for the youngsters. They should know what Gita is, then they will read it. So instead of telling them to go and read it, give them a taste. If they will have the taste, they will by themselves go and read that. And what we do is, we always, always give the instructions. We don't give how to do that. So I think 
give them the taste of that and they will be doing that. Thank you. Next one. What are your views in the relationships and the quality of relations in today's time as well as family culture? Some tips or learning for that? mainly relationship based i know it's a huge question that it's a huge question it's yeah. a huge question but i'll i'll talk in terms of what we all are facing right now if if there are so many issues in relationship one thing that is absolutely a problem and something that i would really love to address is we we tell people to get into a relationship we make the couples or they get into a relationship but they exactly don't know what relationship is all about i think what we all should do and what if you all should start doing it talk to the young generation about your experiences with relationships the more you talk about your life more they will learn about the relationships secondly talk keep the space open to talk and discuss people are not talking these days i'll give you a simple example uh, everyone those who are married they know the golden period is between engagement and marriage that's considered to be golden period and everything is blooming and la la land at that time ye ke che to hu lal kapda peris ye ke che to a perfume chates everything is good and then marriage happens ati parichay vagna tame kyo etle lal pehrvan tame kyo etle perfume chadalo are bhai why एनिवर्सरीपनिंगो एनिवर्सरी हो वाइफ ने खबर हो हसब भूली गया बोलते नहीं पे आखो दिवस दुख न दाड़ा बदा ने फोन कर तो भूली गया तो हम के चेन्ज थी गया पे जेवाज नहीं एंड देन वेन द हसब कम्स एट नाइट मैंने खबर जी ते भूली जासो तो बेन सवार कहवा अत्य तो फूल दुकाने बंद थी गये वी डोट थॉक इट्स ओके टू थॉक I mean, I I I love people. I mean, I have a friend who are couple, and the wife always, you know, tells the husband, you know, day after tomorrow is our anniversary. You better get a gift, good gift for me. And then they enjoy that day, and then they are together. I think the definition of relationship and the way we approach relationship needs to change a bit. And we need to take a breath. You know, we take relationships so much seriously. Or so much lightly, it has to come down to center. अने जगड़ा थवा जो है, सुखी दंपत्य जीवन ने निशान नीचे महीना मतरान जगड़ा न थता हो तो चिंता करवानी. So it fights are happening. It's okay. It's good. Nothing wrong in it. Thank you so much, Bhagirat Bhai. This is an interesting conversation. We are already about ten minutes ahead of time. Uh, we are. over time so what i don't want to miss out is in the seventh step of shangrila if you take us through the seventh step of shangrila then we'll do the final closure to today's talk if that's okay with you yes yes is perfect questions are plenty uh, check box ma pan gana che but i know due to time constraint i am seeing there are so many questions yes yeah, so many yeah. but it's yeah. very nice and uh, i think we we respecting everybody else's time too uh we can we can go ahead and uh, do the seventh step seventh of the yes. i i think uh, you are talking about the meditation that i wanted to do with everyone yes is that uh, is that the seventh step it is the seventh step brilliant we would love to go through the seven steps of shangrila then okay i i'll quickly tell you what the meditation is there will be a music going on uh you all will be you know we'll keep you on mute so that you can only listen to music and my voice uh and i'll take you to the journey of few memories of your life just feel those memories feel whatever you are feeling at that time and let that emotion be felt right there is one simple breathing technique 
I hope those who are sitting with their mic uh, videos off, just look at me and see the breathing technique. This is how you are supposed to breathe. Right? Four times breathe in and out. One, two, three, four, out. One, two, three, four, out. Ama ek instruction. The lungs are, are our own. So treat it very, very carefully. What people do, you have to take four breath. What they do is in the first breath itself, they cover half of the lung. So by the time they reach four, it's like, don't. Just take it in portions. After you have done the breathing, I'll ask you all to close your eyes. You are supposed to close your eyes. And after you have closed your eyes, only open your eyes when I tell you to open. And both the eyes, by the way. Now, sometimes people do like this. Uh, don't. <laughs> Keep both the eyes closed. Yes, it may happen that you may feel like crying. It's okay. Cry. Nothing wrong in it. Clear? Very simple. First breathing, close your eyes. Whatever I tell you, imagine in your mind, go back to those memories. Feel those memories and let it go. Clear? Okay. Let us do the breathing. On my count of four, one, two, three, four, you have to take in and out. Right? Sit in a relaxed position, but back straight, comfortably straight. Okay? Chal. Take the four deep breath in. One, two, three, four, out. One, two, three, four, out. Yes, relax your body and close your eyes. And just listen to the music and my voice. Just relax your body. Don't make it more uncomfortable. Relax. Relax your body. Now, I'll take you to the journey of your memories, of your life, the beautiful portions of your life. Just go to that memory and feel that memory. Try to remember the day when first time you got a chocolate or every time when you have a chocolate in your hand. What do you feel? That feeling of having a chocolate. That happiness of having that chocolate in your hand. That thrill of having a chocolate. Or maybe that time when you first ride a bicycle. When you successfully drove the bicycle. That, that happiness of driving that bicycle by your own. Or Try to remember the time with your siblings or friends when you were very young, when you were a child. A masti, a tofan, ke bhaiyo, beno, friends saate aapne karta. No tension, no worry, just enjoying the life. Atwa cousins saate night out karela hoi. The time we spent with our cousins, our brothers, sisters.
or your mother ma mata get a picture of your mother in your eyes her beautiful face her gracious personality rat rat rab jagu when we were studying papa gusse tha etyar hamesha vachche aavu apra khushi ma vadare khush thau ane apra dukh ma vadare dukhi thau ma mother e avaaj when she used to call you or when she calls you even today the way she addresses you tamaru je rite naam le your ma mother mummy mama loko em ke ke bhagwan bade na pahunchi shake etle ma banavi your mother her infinite love for you those memories with your mother that laughing that care that love feel that love or your father papa pita apra upar gusse thau apra mathe jyare tame khush ho tyare sauthi chello ubelo manas je smile karto hoy yo father jyare tame problem ma ho to sauthi pehlo ube jo manas hoy chinta ma pa sauthi pehlo hoy yo father कड़क पर अंदर थी नरम योर फादर हिज लव हिज कनेक्शन टू यू योर बॉन विथ योर फादर रिमेम्बर दैट और इफ यू हैव अ चाइल्ड रिमेम्बर द कनेक्शन विथ योर चाइल्ड थिंक ऑफ ऑल द गुड मेमोरीज ऑफ योर लाइफ देर इज सो मच गुड इन आर लाइफ थिंक ऑफ ऑल द गुड मेमोरीज feel the happiness in you feel the happiness around you feel the positivity in you feel yourself feel the life in you you are alive life is in the moments life is not in years life is not in days life is in the moment remember all the good moments of your life live it feel it feel now because happiness is inside you you are the source of your happiness it is your right to create your own shangrila and you should create one feel the happiness in yourself feel the positivity around you feel these emotions that you feel when you remember good memories This is the life that you have lived this is the life you are living feel these emotions feel yourself feel the life feel your existence and feel your individuality feel it and whenever you are ready when you want to come out of this slowly you can open your eyes when you want life is not in days life is not in years life is in the moment evu nathi ke hamesha dukh na aasu hoy khushi pan aasu lave whatever you all are feeling right now if you have seriously felt if you have gone through those emotions if you have gone to the memories and if you are feeling something you are alive and be grateful about it be happy about it that you live we live there is so much good in our lives we don't realize it we don't value it we don't feel it make your life simple don't don't complicate your lives life is to live not to regret not to learn how to live life is to live that is life live it feel it because world needs it 
if you want to make your family happy if you want to make your friends happy if you want to make the world happy make yourself happy because if you are not happy you cannot make anyone happy feel it this is shangri la it's your right to create a shangri la for yourself it's your right to live because you are born to live live don't worry at what age you are colonel sanders at the age of 75 he created kfc bauman irani joined bollywood at the age of 56 and amitabh bachchan is still rocking bollywood at the age of more than 75 it doesn't matter where we are right now it doesn't matter what age we are it doesn't matter what we are doing it is our right to live you can start living right life right now you have lived just realize it claim your right to have a happy life and that's where you live that's where you create life this is what i want to say i i i would like to end with one sentence of bill gates bill gates you all know he is the richest person on the planet and there is this sentence that many of the corporate companies are putting okay you know if you are born poor it's not your fault but if you die poor it's your fault but there is another sentence of bill gates that i really love world may not know that you are born but world should know that you died if when you die if even one person is affected by your death you have lived a wonderful life so live life is to live not to learn how to live and follow what buddha said apo deepo bho be the light unto yourself only you can tell yourself how to live no one can teach you i definitely can't and we all are humans work in progress we make spectacularly good choices and outrageously bad mistakes and it's okay to do both live thank you Thank you very much to uh, Bhagirath Bhai. That was an amazing talk, Shangri La, the calling of life. And as Tony Robbins would say, yes. So we say yes. And yes. it's amazing. It's amazing talk. The seven steps to Shangri La, the inspiration, motivation that you've given us today. These chat box is full of compliments. You can have a read through it. So thank you once again. You've been an amazing speaker. I would request Meena Ben to unmute Trishala so that, as the secretary of the Lohana Youth League, this is a lovely lady, Bhagirath Bhai. Uh, the Lohana Youth League would love to say a massive thank you to you. But let me introduce Trishala to you. She's a superhuman being. She's a lawyer by profession, working in the corporate M and A and a private equity practice, and it's a group practice, DLA Piper Africa, and ITM Advocates. She has completed her undergraduate degree in LLB from the University of Kent in the United Kingdom, and a postgraduate diploma in the legal practice, the legal practice course at BBP University College in London, and a postgraduate degree in being an LLM, which is Masters of Law, specializing in international commercial law at the City University in London. Now, this young lady is a hardworking lady. Making Lohana Youth League, being the secretary is not an easy job, I'm sure. But she's making things work over there with a huge Lohana support. That's for us, Trishala Devani. Trishala, welcome. And if you may, um, just uh, say a word of thanks on behalf of the Lohana Youth League. Sure. Thank you so much, Lalit Bhai, for that great introduction, and good evening to everyone on the call tonight. Um, on behalf of the Lohana Youth League, I would just like to say a big thank you to Bhagirath Bhai today for taking out his time on this session. It's been very informative, Bhagirath Bhai. So thank you very much. You've reminded us through the seven steps um, of Shangri La. You've reminded us, um, you know, of, of some very important life lessons, such as you know, let things go, develop self awareness, the art of communication. Um, and these are just to name a few. You've also, you know, taught us that life is to live and not to learn how to live. And I think that's something I'm going to take with me. So thank you so very much. Um, I would also like to thank Mina Ben Kagram for this excellent initiative. Um, you know, these sessions that you organize, Mina Ben. Um, 
it really helps individuals share and gain knowledge. And it's such an important thing that you're doing. So thank you very much. Um, and I'd also like to thank you for inviting the Lohana Youth League to collaborate with you on this particular session. Um, I would like to thank Lalit Bhai Serda for all your support, Lalit Bhai, thank you. Um, the support you offered to Mina Ben, of course, and as well, you know, that you've offered us to the Lohana Youth League. Thank you so very much. Um, you've also been an excellent moderator on this call today, um, and you've enabled the process to flow so smoothly, Lalit Bhai, thank you. Um, the Lohana Margin Mandal and the LYL core team for your support always, thank you very much. Um, and lastly, to all the participants on this call, uh, you've taken the time out to join this call, thank you. Um, I'm sure you've learned a lot and we're leaving this session very much enlightened. So thank you, I'll hand it back to Lalit by now. Thank you very much, Trishala. That's very, very kind of you. Um, we have had an amazing super time. Let me tell you guys, we have some amazing Zoom sessions coming up in the, the next following Saturdays. We have the world-renowned homeopath next Saturday with us talking about homeopathy, health through COVID, health in general. So watch out, tune in with that, get some messages, posters through Minivan. And also the following weekend is a, is a break weekend for us. But after that, we have an ex Miss India. She's coming and really enlightening us on health, well-being, beauty, and Bollywood. So she's gonna be talking about quite a few things. Simra Nahuja is one of the world renowned anchors and award winner, and she's gonna be doing a Zoom with us. So guys, thank you very much for joining in today. Lohana Youth League, thank you, Trishala. Thank you, Deep, for allowing us to be collaborated with you. It was an amazing session. Meena Ben, your vote of thanks is definitely due for Bhagirath Bhai. But before you go on, Bhagirath Bhai, this is one woman at the age of 75 knows how she's living. She knows her Shangri-La, let me tell you that. She admires beauty from a Parijat flower to a rose. And today we've had to extend this time simply because it was an absolutely amazing topic we had with you. So vote of thanks by Meena Ben to Bhagirath Bhai the superhuman lady, as I would call her. Mina Ben, go ahead and mute yourself. By seventh. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Did you really enjoy it? I, yes, we did. Uh, thank you, Bhagirati Bhai. You are like River Ganges running. And I bless you for that. Keep going. Hope your mom is watching and feeling proud of you. Uh, thank you, Chairman Lohana Youth League Dipai. Thank you, Trishala. You are very good speaker as well. Soft, soft spoken secretary, kind and polite. I wish I could go on listening to your wordings. Thank you, Dr. Lalit Bai. My cousin, I cannot do without him. You all agree. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Goodbye. And we will, for a minute, we all will meet. I'm going okay. offline now. Bhagirath okay, Bhai, once again, on behalf of the audience, a massive thank you. Thank you. We'll talk 